Okay, welcome back. This is P Dog with his first physics lecture of the year. Uh, we are going to be studying kinematics. That is a bit of a typo at the top of the notes. It says kinetics. It should be kinematics. And we will be spelling that in just a moment because kinematics is. Okay, part of mechanics, and mechanics is the study of motion. It consists of two parts, kinematics and dynamics. All right, now kinematics is the study of how things are moving, where dynamics is the study of why things are moving. Now, we will be encountering in physics a variety of concepts that have direct applications to mathematics. Now, we'll be emphasizing the conceptual nature of physics, okay? We got it. We have to pay attention to the mathematical aspect of their concepts, okay? And that's important when we're learning the vocabulary of our physics. Okay. The motion of objects can be described by words. Even people without a background in physics have a collection of words to describe these moving objects. We say things like going fast, stopped, slowing down, speeding up, turning, all of these are descriptions of motion that we use. And, okay, and so we have these words, but we have a whole lot of others that are going to be more specific and have a specific mathematical meaning. Examples of these would be distance displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. So the first of these that we're going to talk about are, or actually all of these words can be divided into two major uh, categories. The first ones are scalars, and then there are vectors. Okay, all of these can be divided. All of these can be divided into two categories. Okay, scalars are quantities that are fully described by a magnitude, okay, or a numeric value alone. They are, quote, just a number. Now, they usually have a quantity to it or a unit, but uh, let's say the smallest a scalar can possibly be is zero, okay, unless you have some sort of calibration issue where you allow things to go negative. Scalars tend to be the lowest value is zero. Okay, vectors, on the other hand, when you start dealing with positives and negatives, those are more affected because scalars are quantities that are fully described by both a magnitude and a direction. And the positive and negative when you're dealing with a scalar tends to imply the direction. All right, and the first of these sca scalars and vectors that we're going to deal with are called distance and displacement, and these two are closely related. Okay. However, with distance and displacement, there are two quantities that seem to mean the same thing, but they do have distinctly different definitions and meanings. The first one, distance, is a scalar quantity that refers to how much ground an object has covered during its motion. All right, where displacement is a vector quantity that refers to how far out of place an object is. All right, it is the object's overall change in position. Where displacement is the difference between where an object finishes and where it starts. And the formula for that is given by delta x. Now remember from earlier lecture, this delta means change in. So our change in x, our delta change in position, is our final position minus our initial position. Okay, so to practice this, we're going to examine a cyclist that is out for one heck of a bike ride, because she's, she's quite good at this. Uh, if we have a cyclist traveling 80 kilometers per hour, uh, 80 kilometers to the east in one hour, she turns around, rides 70 kilometers to the west in the next hour, and then another 50 kilometers back to the east during the third hour. What was the distance she traveled? Well, she is going to move. I suggest you draw a picture on these. So she's going to travel 80 kilometers this way. 
then turn around and go another 70 kilometers this way and then back the other direction for another 50. Well the total distance that she travels is going to be your 80 plus your 70 km plus your last 50 km. So altogether that's going to wind up being altogether that's going to wind up being 200 kilometers. The 80 plus the 70 plus the 50s winds up to be 200 kilometers. But what was the displacement? Now this is a little different because if you look up here, if we just examine the initial position and the final position and we subtract those, notice this position is at 60 kilometers this way. Or you're going to add 80 kilometers to the east, subtract 70 going west, and then add another 50 going to the east, and that's a total of 60 kilometers east of where she started. So we can see from this that we have a dip, that we, we illustrate our difference between our distance of, which is the total amount that we are covering over here, as different from our displacement, which is the how far and the direction that she traveled from compared to where she starts to where she finishes. Okay, and this brings us to how fast this all happens. And this is called speed and velocity. And so just as distance and displacement have distinctly different meanings despite their similarities, so do speed and velocity. Speed is a scalar quantity that refers to how fast an object is moving. Now, is it possible to go faster than not, slower than not moving? No, it's not. And that's why the slowest speed an object can possibly handle is zero. However, velocity is a vector quantity that refers to the rate at which an object changes its position. Now, because velocity is a vector, it is a speed with a direction. All right, and so we're going to calculate this, and this is the first of our, actual, of our true uh, uh, true equations that we're going to be do using. Average speed is the total distance traveled divided by the total time of travel, or distance divided by time, okay. where average velocity is the change in position divided by time. Change in position divided by time, or it is displacement divided by time. And so we're going to use the example of the cyclist above. We're going to calculate her average speed and her average velocity. Well, her average speed is going to be her, the distance. The average speed is going to be the distance over time. And if you remember that each leg of her ride took one hour. And so the total distance was a total of 200, but the total time was three hours. And so that would be 66.7, 200 over three, which would be 66.7 kilometers per hour, which is moving pretty fast. Okay. Now, if we take the average velocity, however, because she only finishes 60 kilometers from where she started, she didn't really get a whole lot done, or she got plenty done because she was still traveling pretty fast at 20 kilometers per hour. Because we take our displacement and we divide our displacement by our time to get our velocity. But we're missing something here. This is definitely in the east direction. So once we figured out how to measure our speed, how to figure out our speed, we now need to distinguish between average speed and instantaneous speed. Moving objects often change speed uh, during their motion. We need to be able to distinguish between the average speed and the instantaneous speed. So instantaneous speed is the speed at any moment in time. It's how fast you're going right now. Okay, or your speedometer, for example, measures instantaneous speed. Now average speed okay, is the average of all instantaneous speeds and that's simply found by dividing your distance divided by your time. All right, so example of this, <coughs> if you have, oh, I didn't mean to do that, 
There we go. Uh, if our time increment is increasing by every second, then the position for something moving at a constant speed is going to in of six meters per second is also going to increase by six every second. And this is just like a T chart. Okay? Whereas if we have an object with a changing speed, it might go something like this, where the first second is only going one meter. But after two seconds, it travels, it's gone four meters. After three seconds, it's gone nine meters. And after four seconds, it's gone 16 meters. And so that is definitely a changing speed. The word is speed is increasing over time. All right, so let's do some more calculations. Um, more examples. A physics teacher in her classroom, as a demonstration of displacement and distance, walks two meters north, four meters east, then two meters south, then four meters west. And she does this in 24 seconds determine the teacher's average speed and average velocity. Well, the average speed relates to the distance traveled divided by the amount of time. So the first thing we have you guys do is you should draw a picture with this. Rashid moves two meters north, four meters east, two meters south, and then four meters west again. So if our average speed relates to the distance traveled by the amount of time, the teacher traveled a total of 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 4 meters, a total of 12 meters, in 24 seconds. So the distance divided by the time would just be 24 meters divided, 12 meters divided by 24 seconds, which is 0.5 meters per second. However, average velocity relates the total displacement or the total change in position from the beginning of the end, from the beginning to the end of the motion, and that's divided by the time. And so the average velocity for that would be, well, zero meters per second. Because the teacher returns to the place where she started, which was right here, this means that she has zero average velocity despite traveling a distance of 12 meters because she starts where she finishes. Therefore, her velocity is going to be zero meters per second. This brings us to our final portion of our introduction to kinematics, and this is if we have a changing velocity, and that would be acceleration. Acceleration is a vector quantity that's defined as the rate at which an object's velocity changes. An object is accelerating if it is changing its velocity. Velocity can, can be changed in one of two ways. It can be changed by either increasing, by either changing your speed, or because it is a vector quantity, you can also change, you can also accelerate if you change your direction. If you can change your direction, then you would also be accelerating. Okay, now, constant acceleration is what we'll, we will deal with mostly in this class. And that's when an object is changing its velocity by the same amount every second. For example, free fall motion. Objects falling close to the Earth, as in not in orbit, like within sight of the ground, from the ground, they have a constant acceleration of 9.8 meters per second. So how do we calculate an average acceleration? An average acceleration is given by the change in velocity over the change in time. Now, there's a typo here, and I want to apologize for that. This should be v final minus v initial right there, not v final minus v final. v final minus v final would be zero, and it would never change. Finally, a rule of thumb for the acceleration vector, and here's how you can tell. If the object is speeding up, if it's getting faster, 
then the direction of the acceleration is the same as the direction of the velocity. Okay, so if they're both traveling positive, then you're going to be getting faster. If they're both going in the negative direction, they're both going to get faster, even though they would be more negative. It would just be getting faster. And if an object is, in, is slowing down, then the direction of the acceleration vector is the opposite as the velocity vector. So that looks a little something like this. If yellow... If so let's draw some pictures that uh, sort of explain this. We're going to use yellow as our velocity. And we will use green as our acceleration. So if we are traveling in the, if our velocity is traveling, say, in the positive, I'm sorry, in the negative direction, and our velocity changes in that direction, okay, remember this would be negative direction over here, okay, then we are going to get faster. If we travel in the positive direction, and we have our acceleration in the same direction, this is going to make our velocity get faster, and so this will also be faster. Now, this might be easier to understand if we consider how this, uh, if they work against each other. So, if they work against each other, let's say we have a velocity in the negative direction, but our acceleration is in the positive direction, you can see how the acceleration might be working against the velocity. And if this is the case, if the acceleration is working against the velocity, this would be getting slower, or your speed would be decreasing. Whereas if we're going the other direction, but we have an acceleration that is acting against, okay, this would also be a decreasing speed situation. So for velocity and acceleration are acting in opposite directions, our speed is decreasing. If they're traveling in the same direction, our speed is increasing. Okay, or speeding up and slowing down. And that's it for our first lecture. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you guys next time. This is P-Dog, signing off.